What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Logan Built channel here. Today, we are doing a little unboxing video of a nice little product that uh, Art Captain reached out to me about. This is a, their TIG 200 welder. Uh, they saw the video that I did on the Everlast welder that I recently got, and they reached out and said, hey, man, could you use another welder? Uh, and I said, absolutely. And so they sent me this welder to demo for you guys uh, to see what I think about it. So uh, this is my very first time taking it out of the box here. Uh, we're going to go over my first impressions on the welder and some of the features on the welder and the settings on it. Uh, this is a really, really well-priced welder. Uh, it's a nice entry-level welder for anybody that is new to TIG welding. It's very compact, very light, and I think that this is going to be an awesome little review for anybody looking to get into TIG welding for the very first time. So stick around, and we'll go over all the specifics. At the end, I'll go over the price and with a link for you guys to check this thing out. So I'll kind of give you guys my first impressions of this stuff as we take it out of the box here. So the gas cord, I actually really like the gas cord. Uh, it has a nice feel to it. Uh, it doesn't feel like super cheap rubber. Seems like it would hold up pretty good. Uh, the ends have nice crimps on them. So I don't see anything that's alarming. I think that this would be pretty durable really. Uh, standard you know 220 to 110 cord uh, the gauge on the cord seems fine uh, it seems to match the gauge on the welder itself uh, once again you know this isn't a welder that you're going to be welding extremely thick stuff with so the gauge on everything seems fine little cleaning brush setup uh, that's really nice. Nice little feature there. And then like most of these uh, combo welders, you know, this is a TIG stick. So I don't really do any stick welding work what I do. Uh, so I'm not super up to date, educated on the stick side of things, but let's uh, get it out of the package here and take a look at it. The gauge of wire on the lead here for the stick welder looks really nice. Looks to be in line with the other wire. Looks like it's a nice lead for the stick rods. Uh, don't see anything here that looks out of the ordinary for me. Right away, I can tell you that I like this ground setup. Uh, this ground is a lot more like my old Lincoln was than my Everlast. I like that it's a nice crimped in fitting here that's bolted onto that. Uh, once again, the gauge of the wire seems consistent with everything else. All the crimps and everything look good on it. Looks like a pretty durable, nice clamp, especially for the money. So right off the bat here, I can see that this TIG torch has the uh, remote button set up on it, just like my Everlast does, which I was kind of shocked. I wasn't expecting to see that. Um, I've used this a little bit on some interior work uh, inside of a truck I was working on, and this is super handy to have, uh, not have to worry about having the foot pedal if you're trying to be in a cramped space, working on a roll cage or something like that. And then the sheeting on this is nice. It's a, it's a nice rubber sheeting. Uh, has a good feel to it. Everything seems really nice there. Uh, once again, the gas hookup. The fittings have nice crimped ends on them. Uh, looks like a you know, pretty durable setup. Uh, I could say the only thing 
you might want to watch make sure you don't knock this fitting off you know you might want to be careful when you plug this in just because this is a a plastic like an airline 90 degree fitting there so uh, that's something that I could see you know being being mindful of but other than that the you know pretty pretty comparable looking TIG torch to my Everlast comes with multiple different cups uh, different ends for the electrode looks like it's got some different size couplers for different electrodes or uh, tungsten I mean so that looks like a pretty nice deal. Looks like a pretty nice, pretty straightforward gas gauge setup. Uh, growing up welding and with my first Lincoln, I had a two gauge setup, and so I always liked that more than this uh, style here, but ever since I started using my Lincoln, or I'm sorry, my Everlast, uh, it has this style set up and I actually really like the way that this is. So I'm happy to see that the Arc Captain welder here uses this style setup. Uh, I think it's really easy to read and to know quickly if you've got the right amount of gas setting and, and how low your mother bottle is. Looks like really nice quality brass on this. Uh, this look, honestly looks like a, a nicer regulator setup than even my Everlast has, so really happy with that. Oh heck yeah, they sent me some gloves with this deal. Let's take a look at these babies. Seems like a pretty nice pair of gloves, honestly. I got really big, meaty hands, so a little tight for my hands, but I think normal people's hands, these are actually really comfortable gloves. And uh, I think, you know, once they break in a little bit, even with my bigger hands, I think that these will be really nice to use. This is a nice little added touch. I wasn't expecting this. Also wasn't expecting them to send me a welding helmet here either. So this is also really nice. Nice little cover for it to stay in. A little warranty information there. This is an auto dark helmet, like everything nowadays. Dude, pretty cool looking helmet. Nice little graffiti setup on it. I like that. I like how all this stuff is over here on the side. Uh, some of the other helmets that I'm used to using, most of the, you know, settings and whatnot are inside the helmet here. So I actually like that being on the outside there. Let's see what it feels like. Not bad. Pretty comfortable. Pretty cool. My favorite thing about this welder is how compact it is. You can kind of see the size difference here with the hood sitting next to it. It's super slim, not extremely long. Uh, this would fit on any cheaper Harbor Freight style uh, welding cart. Uh, that's gonna be super easy to carry around. It's only 26 and a half pounds uh, as to where the other stuff is in the 40 plus pound range. So very, very compact. This is definitely gonna be the welder of choice for uh, going and doing mobile type stuff with it. It's a 200. It's got the uh, pulse setting that you can run up or down. You can play with the pre and post flow with it. Uh, one thing that I really like about it is over here on the side, it has a list of material, the aluminum, steel, stainless steel, the main three materials that you're gonna be welding. It shows you what thickness that you're using and it'll tell you uh, what settings to put the machine on, what tungsten to use. Uh, this is extremely helpful for a beginning welder that has really no direction uh, or doesn't really exactly know what to do. This is gonna get you a really nice baseline here. 
With this welder, you can do up to 3 16 aluminum, 3 16 steel, and 3 16 stainless steel. So uh, that's plenty thick enough for most people starting out, uh, especially if you guys are doing fab projects on uh, you know, racing type vehicles. Uh, it's pretty rare that you would use anything more than 3 16 of an inch anyways. So super nice welder, really looking forward to trying this thing out. Turn it on here for you guys so you can see the digital display. Obviously, the fan's going to run the whole time, so that's going to mess with the audio. But I just want to show you guys how nice this digital display looks. On-off switch in the back, like most every welder. So right now it's on. It's detecting that it's on 110 volt uh, because we're just plugged into the normal outlet here. If you were to unplug it and put it in the 220, it would detect that it is 220 and then you can choose if you're doing uh, DC TIG or AC TIG with that uh, you can change your pulse here yes or no pulse and then you can change the frequency of the pulse so lots of uh, stuff you can do with this there's even a spot weld setting that you can use as well and then obviously the knob here is going to run your amperage up or down, depending on what you're welding. So really straightforward. I like that they've made it very simple uh, for a new welder to be able to use and understand the changes that you're making here. So normally this setup does include a foot pedal with it. Uh, the foot pedal was on back order when I got this one. So I uh, don't have the foot pedal yet, but I'm uh, curious to get started with it, see how it does. I have a fab project coming up here really soon that I'm going to be making a video using this welder. And I'm actually going to use uh, this welder for some of the job and then the Everlast for some of the job too and do a direct comparison on these two entry level welders. Uh, first impressions of this welder, is looks like you get a lot of bang for your buck. This thing is extremely well priced. The entry price on this is $749. Uh, that doesn't include the helmet and the gloves. Uh, that was a nice little gift from Art Captain to me, but it does include everything else you see in the video plus the foot pedal. So really, really cheap entry point for you to get into a nice little TIG welder that's going to be able to do aluminum, stainless, and regular mild steel. So really looking forward to working with this welder and seeing what all that it has to offer for us. So make sure you guys stick around, click that like or subscribe button to stay notified on when I put out new videos. I will drop a link in the description of this video so if you guys are interested in checking out these welders you'll be able to go right to that link and it'll take you to this exact welder here and you guys can check out all that art captain has to offer and so next time we'll be putting this thing through its paces and we'll see how much bang for your buck you really get with this thanks guys catch you on the next one